Hello and welcome to this video on missing data mechanisms. My name is Christian Geiser. I'm an instructor and statistical consultant with Quantfish and on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials. I usually talk about multivariate statistical methods including factor analysis, structural equation modeling, multi-level analysis and latent class modeling. If this is something that interests you, please consider subscribing to this channel. Also check out the description for additional resources including workshops that I offer for Quantfish. In this video, I want to talk about missing data mechanisms. Why is this important? First of all, why is missing data something that is important to think about? Almost everybody who has conducted an empirical study has encountered missing values in their studies and missing values can be a problem. First of all, when you have missing scores, this reduces your sample size and this can lead to a reduction in statistical power. So when you plan to conduct, for example, tests of statistical significance, then it can be a problem if you have reduced statistical power because then you may not be able to find significance for some or multiple of the effects that you plan to test in your study. So missing values can lead to a reduction in statistical power and that can be a problem. Maybe even more importantly, missing values can also lead to bias in statistical results and whether or not this is the case depends on missing data mechanisms in part and then also depends on how you handle missing data and that is again related to the missing data mechanisms and therefore it is worthwhile to learn about missing data mechanisms and to understand them and to also understand how each one can be handled in practice. So let's get started here. What are the missing data mechanisms that can be distinguished according to Rubin's work? First is missing completely at random data or MCAR data. Second is missing at random data or MAR data. And then finally we have missing not at random data or MNAR data. I want to go through each one of these here with you based on an example and the example here is a study in which we wish to predict income for example by using multiple regression analysis or path analysis or structural equation model and so income here would be our outcome variable that we're interested in predicting from a set of independent variables so for example the type of profession, maybe gender, maybe age, other variables to find out what predicts income. So let's get started with missing completely at random data or the missing completely at random mechanism. What does this mean? Missing completely at random means that missingness in income scores, for example, is completely unrelated to income and other measured variables in the study. In other words, the observed data points in this case are a random sample of the complete data. So meaning that the data set that you obtained with the missing scores is not in any way statistically different from the data set that you would have obtained if there hadn't been any missing score. So the data sets, so say, are randomly equivalent, meaning that there could be differences in some of the means of the variables. However, this would simply be explained by sampling error and there's not a systematic difference between the complete data set that you don't have and the um, data set that has missing scores that you do have and therefore missing completely at random in a way is benign because there's not a systematic difference in your reduced data set as compared to the hypothetical complete data set and therefore there won't be any bias when you analyze this reduced data set however you could have a loss of statistical power because you have less data and if you have a lot of missing data, even missing completely at random data, this could compromise your analysis because you may not be left with enough data, of course, and then that could cause problems. You might have standard errors that are very high and or you might have unstable parameter estimates, for example, in a structural equation model. So missing completely at random can still be problematic, but in a sense, it is a benign 
mechanism because the missingness has nothing to do with your data set. What is an example? An example would be if questionnaire um, data was simply lost by the investigator randomly. So let's say the data were collected in terms of sending people questionnaires or giving people questionnaires and then the investigator or an assistant randomly loses some of those questionnaires and it has nothing to do with some whether somebody has high or low income or whether somebody is old or young or male or female it's completely unrelated to the data in that case you would have missing completely at random data Another example would be a planned missing data design where you randomly assign participants to variable sets to save time and money so you wouldn't administer all variables to all people but instead you would randomly select variables from subsets of people and in this case too the randomness ensures that missingness is not related to your data at all because um, you randomly assign people to those variable sets and then you have also missing completely at random data which is why planned missing data designs can be powerful because they allow you to have missing completely at random data that then can be analyzed with techniques that address this missingness properly and we'll talk about those in a little bit. Next is the missing at random mechanism and the missing at random mechanism is often misunderstood because missing at random kind of sounds like the same as missing completely at random. So you might think that missing at random means that missingness is not related to the data, but that's in fact actually not the case. So missing at random is a systematic missing data mechanism. However, it is also a benign missing data mechanism, even though it is systematic as we will see. So what does missing at random mean? Missing at random means that the probability of missing income scores is related to other variables. However, those are variables that are in your data and it's not related to income itself. So other variables that you have collected explain or are correlated with the missing income scores. For example, missing information on income could be due to age. So it might be the case that older people maybe don't like to report on their income. They're maybe more conservative. They don't want you to know about their income. And so then um, those missing scores would be systematically related to age. And as long as you have age measured and in your data, then you have missing at random data because then that explanatory variable or that missing data correlate can be included in your statistical model in one way or another. So missing at random is still benign because you know why the scores are missing. With missing completely at random, you don't know, but you also don't have to know because it's not related to any of the variables in your data set. So your reduced sample is still representative of the hypothetical full sample, so no problem. With missing at random, there is a systematic missingness. However, you have the information about missingness because those are background variables or other explanatory variables in your model, so-called auxiliary variables that you have in your data set that you can include in the statistical analysis to um, account for those missing scores. Lastly, we have the missing not at random or MNAR mechanism. And as the data suggests, this is not so, or as the term suggests, this is not so benign because with missing not at random data, the probability of income scores missing is related to income itself. So it depends on, for example, whether individuals have high or low income, whether they don't report this data, for example. So it could be that individuals with high income, they feel embarrassed and they feel like, oh, um, that makes me look rich. And maybe this is something that I feel uncomfortable with, that the investigator would know that I'm that rich. Or it could be that poor people don't like to report their income because they are embarrassed that they don't make more money and then you would have a problem because then you don't have that information because this is your outcome variable and the outcome variable itself lacks 
those scores of those high or low income people and you have no way of knowing why the scores are missing and so therefore this is a problem because you don't have the information available about those missing cases unlike missing at random data where also the scores may be missing on your outcome variable income however you know why because you have age and age explains or age in this case in this example is correlated with missing income so in that situation you can account for that but when the income scores are missing due to income itself then this is a real problem un unless you have somewhere else some information about this so if you can figure this out in some other way but if you don't have the information then this is a problem because it can lead to bias because you're systematically losing individuals with either high or low income so therefore this is a problem now let's compare those three mechanisms with regard to some important parameters here. Missing completely at random in a way, as I said before, is probably the most benign mechanism because the missingness is completely unrelated to your data and there's nothing so to say to worry about other than a loss of sample size and a loss of potential power also missing completely at random is a testable condition so there are tests available where you can figure out whether this assumption um, must be rejected or not so this is one that can be tested and it can be handled well so you can use full information maximum likelihood estimation for example for a regression model or a path model or structural equation model with this type of missing data or you could use multiple imputation and then you can retain more statistical power and also you can um, then um, or you won't have any bias with those types of methods with missing completely at random data you could even use listwise deletion without having trouble with bias however you would lose a lot of data so therefore that's not recommended to do however so say missing completely at random is so benign that even if you then um, deleted cases listwise with missing data you wouldn't this wouldn't result in um, bias in the parameter estimates with missing at random data we have the one issue that this is not testable so you can never know for sure that missing that data are missing at random however what you can do is you can look in your data for missing data correlates so you can figure out what variables in my data set are correlated with dropout and for example you can look at age is age correlated with a binary missing missing data indicator and then you could include age in your study in your statistical model as an auxiliary variable and handle missing data with full information maximum likelihood or multiple imputation and then that would lead to um, a, or that would help you retain statistical power and also to avoid bias so MAR is benign as long as you can include all relevant variables that are correlated with missingness in your statistical model either as explanatory variables or as auxiliary variables some programs like for example M plus allow you to include as many auxiliary variables as you have so as many missing data correlates as you can find behind the scenes in a way that doesn't disturb your model that doesn't blow up your model and so this is very convenient to handle in modern programs that use full information maximum likelihood estimation such as for example m plus missing not at random is the most problematic case because this is not only not testable but it's also difficult to address properly so you cannot simply use full information maximum likelihood estimation or multiple imputation and be fine with it because even those techniques could result in biased parameter estimates simply because the information about why the data are missing are not included and cannot be accounted for there are special methods available for missing not at random data however those make strong assumptions and that can still be problematic
I hope you found this video useful to learn more about missing data mechanisms and how you can address missing data properly. If you did, please subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to check out the description for additional resources, including a missing data handling workshop with M that I offer through Quantfish and I'll see you next time.